It's good. Actually, I think we got it. I think we got it. Hi. Sorry we're late by 60 seconds or whatever it is. Um, sun sitting behind us. It's kind of romantic. This is, this is romantic? Very romantic. It's a romantic walk with Mark, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So we're in uh, Zone 1, Village 2. Is that correct? It's a zone 1, Village 2, a Bitty Bitty. Um, I'm just wandering around. I just asked Noah what, what that was in the distance because I'm kind of curious what I'm looking at. What am I looking at there, Noah? People are uh, fetching water here. This is uh, what we we bring water into the settlement. And then it's piped right here so people can bring their jerry cans and uh, bring water home. They're going to be bringing it home to cook dinner, maybe have a shower after a long, hot day of farming. And it's usually kids, especially girls, who uh, fetch water. So here it is. Hello from Greece. Daniel says a name I cannot pronounce. Hi. Elena uh, Araujo says hi. Vanessa says Greece loves you. Greece is, Greece is loving us today. So yeah. check it out. We love Greece. So what am I looking at? So I guess here's a tap for people just filling up their water. Is it on? Mm, okay. Here we're just having a discussion about the origins of the water. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Greece loves you. Hello from uh, You legend. Hi, says Josephine Carter. Thank you, Josephine Carter. Um, so, oh, I should do. I should do a bit of an intro, shouldn't I? Um, so I keep getting uh, the question over and over again, like, um, you know, why are we here? What are we doing? And I think that that's actually. The most important question and, and forgive me if I'm sort of flogging the dead horse of describing this again but it, it, it bears repeating um, look this is the gravest humanitarian crisis in the world right now um, we, there's never been uh, quite an exodus like what we're seeing in Eastern Africa and it needs to be spoken about what people like Noah and myself are trying to do is build a consciousness and create a massive massive dialogue if possible about the fact that a lot of people have been murdered a lot of people have lost their lives a lot of people have lost everything that they once owned and they're now after fleeing for their lives trying to set up in, in countries that are not their homes and are not their own um, do I understand why our media completely ignores it I don't think I ever will, you know? But uh, the truth is, it needs to be spoken about. So, but a bit, bit of a, bit of a, hi, you want to come? Oh, yeah. I think we, we have a guest. We have a guest. Hi, I'm Daniel. I think she's coming on to me. Uh, people are getting lots of hearts. Rukia, you're getting lots of hearts. Two hearts. They can sense tension between you and I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway. These are uh, host community members, uh, Ugandans, who are coming here to the market, which is right up around here. One of the great things about this system is refugees and host communities are living side by side in many cases. And it's a great opportunity to try to build peace between them and, and a really positive interactions. Um, so there they're off to, to do some shopping. So, my rant from the beginning, and this might be a little bit of a boring history lesson to repeat it here, but the reason that people are here, the very reason that people are here is that there is a terrible war that has been raging since December 2013. Um, and that civil war is the thing that has thrust people from their homes. And not a lot of people know that in the West, but it's really important and it bears repeating, you know, like that that conflict is the reason that millions and millions of people are going to all of these neighboring countries. Now, Uganda has inherited some almost million of these refugees. And because they're 
awesome. <laughs> They're doing their very best to accommodate these refugees and give them, give them plots of land, as you can see here, so they can perform their farming. They're giving them limited forms of education and they're providing them with health care, which is amazing. But the, 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 the more amazing and more desired thing is that this conflict end. You know, this is, this is the biggest issue that sort of needs addressing, you know. Um, and again, if we talk about what's happening here, if we talk about the fact that, that, that thousands and thousands more keep streaming into these refugee camps, then we're actually addressing the issue. But the, the more immediate needs are that we supply aid and that we supply you know, um, food and, and, and sanitation for these people. That's obviously like what we need to do. But, but the, the, the longer term goal is ultimately to awaken the global community and, and, and get them to to either intervene or at least weigh in on, on what is just a brutality that's happening day after day. Anyway, I don't want to bum you out because I'm actually looking at something rather... So this is a market. Um, we're, st we're still in Village 1 Zone 2, right? Yeah. That's yeah, so Village 1 Zone 2. Zone 1 Village 2. Zone 1 Village 2, all right. One of uh, five zones in the so like they were saying that as many as 8,000 refugees a day would come streaming into these camps as, as, as I was mentioned before the size of Bidi Bidi is around 52 square kilometers and I mean you can walk all day across this thing and it's it's its own city with its own infrastructure and its own uh, communities, you know, and tribes have found sort of different areas and regions, you know. What's crazy is, you know, a thing that, that Noah and I are kind of fighting to do and, and, and trying to ensure is that we're not here to um, throw grief porn at you, you know what I mean? This is, this is not grief porn, this is not, this is not us saying, look, look at, you know, obviously we're talking about a grave situation, but we're not talking about people who are, you know, who are, who are just sort of falling beneath the weight of this, this tragedy. What they're doing is they're fucking resourceful. I mean, look at this. This is a marketplace. And these are people who haven't been here longer than in five or six months. They've built, like, industry, you know? They're, they're surviving because they're rock stars, you know? Anyway, um, I think it's really important to sort of state, like, that... Even though the, you know, the, the, the major objective of all of these families is to, to ultimately return home, they're here making the situation the best that it can possibly be. Can we'll take it for a second? Yeah, sure. So we've just been walking through this market, and uh, as you can see, there's an enormous, and we're going to go back and maybe we can pick up a few things we need for the journey back. But, uh, you know, people are selling an enormous number of things, they're selling clothes, they're selling uh, food that they've grown, food that they've purchased on the market. We were talking to one lady who says that she she goes, I don't know how many miles away, she uh, takes a bus to go get fish from the river and then brings it back here to sell to people. You know, people aren't just sitting around waiting for handouts, they're, they're struggling, they're fighting um, to try to make ends meet and do and do what they can. They're, they're trying to make money to to uh, put send their kids, you know, kids to school to buy extra things they need. Sometimes they just want to get, you know, mobile phone credit so that they can try to call home if they can and, and connect with some people back home. So it's just, it's a really uh, amazing thing to see such, you know, resilient, powerful, uh, hardworking people who are uh, stuck in just what a terrible situation and, and still fighting to try to get to get through it and do whatever they can to to make the most for themselves and for their children. Fuck that. So yeah, I mean, we're saying we're here, the, and the reason we're here is we're saying, like, listen to us. We're lending our voices, hopefully, to, to, to what's happening here, and we're asking you to, to lend your voices. So, yeah, look, I'm not going to do a big fundraising rant today. I don't think today's the day for it. You know, today's going to be our last day, and what I want to just say to you is, listen, you know, we, we've, we've talked to you about donations to Oxfam. I've talked to you about my whole t-shirt campaign thing. But actually, the more important thing you can do is, even with just taking, like, this feed, you know, this, this, this live feed like this, you can, if you share this, this is tremendous to us. If you share any, that, 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 that has tremendous currency to, to all of these people. If, you, you, if you're creating a 
conversation here, you know? That's the most important thing. And, uh... I was thinking about talking to uh, Augustine mm -hmm. today, uh, or yesterday, rather. Kind of, just like today. Um, so, so we were talking to a gentleman who, um, yesterday was just describing his ordeal leaving South Sudan and one of the most incredible things that he sort of said to me and it stuck with me is that he said listen like we're really grateful to be here and we're really grateful for what Uganda's brought us but we're stranded he used the word stranded you know what I mean and, 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 and that urged her to hear you know like he said like until until there's this peace that, that you know like again that large numbers of people can probably have an influence over then then they're ultimately going to remain stranded, anyway. Where should we go now, man? We can go anywhere. Do people want to see what's uh, on sale in the market? you want to talk to some people? I don't know, man. What should we... Any, are you I getting any questions? Oh, yeah, we're getting tons. Huh? How far do they have to travel for water? Noah. That's a great question from Leah. Leah, good job. That's a great question, Leah. Thank you. Water is such a huge issue here. It's really green now, and it's raining. But in the dry season in particular, it's really, really rough. Uh, so what we're trying to do is put uh, stations all around the settlement so that people can walk just a short distance to be able to access water. Um, there's a standard that the Ugandan government has. There are standards that the international community has um, that people shouldn't have to go too far to be able to access water. Um, so we're trying to bring water as close as possible to people so they get their jerry can, those big yellow containers you saw, and a couple times a day um, go and fetch water. It's a great question and it's, it's hugely important. Right now we're trucking water, um, which is really, really expensive, but we're trying to do more and more drilling of boreholes so that underground aquifers can supply water. People can have better quality, cleaner water for a lot, a lot cheaper so that they can um, have water for washing, for domestic needs, for everything they need. Uh, hello, Daniel. I'm going to read that. Hey, the, the Texas Amy Swinger, uh, Venus Clark, you're doing amazing stuff there. Loving what you're doing, blah, blah. So, uh, the original, no original questions. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Taufik Kediha, what you're doing is amazing. Hat, she says she just said, hats down. Uh, okay, inspiring what you're doing. Deborah Hutchison says, there you are. Um, okay, I'm going to wait till we get a cool question. And I'll just go to it. We've we got for a while. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Do you want to go that way? Or what was that? Was kind of more interesting, right? What was yeah, that? What was that? Do you, was, do you want to do you want to do the market? I kind of want to just keep walking. Right? Let's just do a little. Uh, wait. Uh, hello from Brazil. Okay, we're gonna. Uh, what are we doing? Thank you for all the compliments, you guys. You're awesome. I don't know if I'm making much sense because I'm fucking tired. That's the other thing is I can go fuck on it. It's <laughs> terrific. So the great okay, help from South Africa. Um, okay, guys, thank you. I'm just reading through your questions, folks. So forgive me. <laughs> Tiana's written death stare. Laugh out loud. Did, did we receive a death stare? I don't remember that. I actually feel like you know the crazy thing is. Um, Actually, it's Tierna Jugmi says death stare. I was actually just saying to Noah before that I felt like there's n like very little hostility towards us, considering we're we're the assholes carrying around a phone and wandering around. Um, was that interesting, or was it just a waterhole? Maybe I'm, uh, damn it, I've walked up the wrong way. That's okay. So sorry, man. Okay, you know what? Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I'm just reading your questions, guys. So, pick them up. Oh, look. What about it? What about it? Critical glasses. They'll probably kill me later. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I was in the road. Um, uh, we need to know about this so we can take action and help, says Susan Holder. You're absolutely right. Venice Clark says, your audio is shite, mate. Uh, Venice, I apologize. We are probably the only human beings who have ever performed a Facebook Live of any kind in this, in this region of the world. And so, in one way, we're pioneers and trailblazers. In another way, we're knuckleheads. So, forgive us for the shitty, shitty quality of the audio. Um, passion of you. Got to talk.
The sun's kind of sitting here. What happened today? You know, what can we, what can we talk about? Should we talk about the uh, Global Emergency Response Coalition? Yeah, you can do it. I might just flip it around so you can see where we're uh, oh, yeah. where we're headed. Um, but today's an incredibly important day because we're launching an appeal of uh, what's called the Global Emergency Response Coalition. It's a group of some of the biggest international NGOs in the world that uh, are just trying to come together in response to what is the this unprecedented humanitarian crisis affecting people all across Africa and in Yemen. And uh, if you want to help, a great thing to do is check out this coalition, particularly if you're in the U.S., but not exclusively. It's the globalemergencyresponse.org. Check it out and, and see what's going on. There's some great organizations, Oxfam, Save the Children, World Vision, Plan International, CARE, all coming together in response to this just unprecedented crisis trying to, to do something about it and uh, your help is, is incredibly appreciated financially but as Daniel's been saying it's also just about voice it's about speaking up and not letting people here in this remote corner of, of, of the world not letting them be forgotten so um, I was giving a statistic yesterday actually uh, oh, this is, I thought it was 83 Turns out it's 86 percent. That's the 86 percent is the number of is the percentage of the population that are women and children that come into bitty bitty. You know, it's that, that's the thing is, and this is something I didn't even really understand is that, you know, uh, a lot of the men understandably want to remain and, and fight. You know, and so obviously, like um, you know, like we just interviewed family after family today who have lost husbands and fathers and brothers, you know? Um, and a lot of these families don't, I mean, most of them had zero communication with them, um, didn't know whether or not their significant others, their sons, their brothers, their uncles were, were alive, you know? And, and that's that's been actually one of the most startling things for me to discover, you know? And these guys just don't really see an end to the conflict anytime soon, but one thing's for sure, Everybody that we talk to, um, from 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 all walks of life, you know, who are residents of refugee settlements, said to us universally, you know, like, but the big thing needs to happen is just what we've sort of been repeating ad nauseum, which is, look, th th this needs to end. You know, it's not this peace is not going to find itself. You know, the conflict isn't going to resolve itself and and this issue has to be addressed internationally and with powers that can actually overcome what's happening. Kira's May, what you're doing is amazing, thank you. Man. Uh, Carolina Randon, I'm talking about important things, but I have to go. Daniel sends a hello to Brazil. Yeah, hi Brazil. Amazing. What made you choose to work with Oxfam, says Helena Petrovic. Um, Two words, Jackie Nelson. So Jackie is, is a, a rock star who works for Oxfam, who um, approached me uh, via, via my publicist. That sounds so pretentious, but it's the truth. And we spoke with each other and kind of hit it off, and she understood that the kinds of things that I was interested in. I'd already done some work with Action Contra Fan. And uh, I was interested in pursuing some work with Oxfam, who I just think are one of the most incredible humanitarian resources on Earth. Um, greetings from Mexico. If you're wondering what that noise is right now, Oh uh, yeah, audio is shite. We were, we're passing by a, gr uh, a grinding mill. So what happens is people uh, are given uh, some grain when they get here, and, and then every every uh, every few weeks. Shout louder. Um, shout louder. And so what they do is they come here and they grind that maize, so they're able to actually uh, boil it and cook it and, and, and eat it. Um, 
as you might be seeing later on on Instagram, Daniel tried a more traditional means of uh, grinding uh, the sorghum or the grain uh, using some rocks. This is the easier way. Is that cool? I'm gonna give the, I'm gonna give the camera the key. Did you wanna hold it? Okay, you have a new host. This is your new host. Look at him holding it like it's a grenade. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to move on. I can't get it on. Conversation about a SIM card. So another another issue, and this is actually now now I will do a little bit of a campaign plug. Like, this guy's down over here. Well, another issue is um, that Noah and I have run into over and over again. Apart from the fact that there are schools here with hundreds of children in the classroom, and literally one or two teachers to take care of like armies of children you know like if, if, if teachers even sort of show up they, there's basically no there's, there's essentially no established schools you know they're, trying, they're, they're doing the best they can but um, they're obviously their resources are super under furnished you know but um, and that's the, that's actually another thing is that you know UN has made demand of something like 1.2 billion dollars, I believe. That's the, those were the, those were the funds to sort of that the uh, that the UN was asking for in order to sort of deal with the situation, and, and, and they've received less than 17 percent of that funding. And you know, and, and the the price that is paid is by these incredible children. It's whether it's sort of lack of medicine or whether it's schools that aren't built or whether it's, you know, lack of basic sanitation, you know. I mean, obviously, everything that we see here is an incredible fucking feat. But we need more, you know. They Every, need more. Everything that you see, I mean, if you see just how fertile the soil is, it's incredible. Everything you see here was built by the people who came here. In this settlement, these people have been here six, seven, maximum kind of nine months. And they built an entire city, basically, a rural city, but a city with uh, homes. And they built their latrines. They built their bathing structures. They have shops, market stalls. We saw a little 
gum and and yeast and oh, things yeah. by the side of the road. Yeah, I mean, like like you know, Noah said something kind of profoundly depressing to me before, but it was like no, but it was but it was it was accurate, you know, like and that we stopped off at at what would be in any other country really like a lemonade stand, you know, and I bought a mango juice and some gum, and you know, and and Noah said, you know, it's it's fascinating to think like. That's not just a lemonade stand. That's a lemonade stand for survival, you know. And again, like that just shows you the kind of kind of grit and power. It's what is happening here? Driving a motorcycle. There's a kid running with a machete. That looks good and safe. Yeah. I apologize for the hat here. It's fucking nightmarish. Um, man, we could just walk for hours. Can you give a little shout out to our incredible interpreter, yes. Jane, over here? <laughs> Who's been following us? <laughs> I'll let you do the honor. Hi, Jane. This Hi. is Jane, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Jane how is how many months pregnant? I'm eight months pregnant. Soon expected. I mean, a big thank you to Jane, who. Like has, has been wandering with us. How many months did you say? Um, eight months. That is embarrassing. We're, we're, we're monsters. We're monsters. And she's following us through the sweltering heat, listening to our garbage and interpreting it beautifully and making us look a whole lot cooler than we are all day long. And Jane comes from. I'm from South Sudan. Um, yeah. 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 She's got two kids already, putting through school, right? Yes. Talk about them a little bit if you want. Yeah, I have two children, boy and a girl, so I'm a refugee. I came last year in July, so I'm a second, and I'm a happy to be in Uganda. Then come to that. We're happy to have you. Yeah, yeah. So lucky. Yeah. So grateful. Sorry, is this embarrassing? <laughs> is this weird? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she says something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's his friend. That boy carrying a machete really troubles me. It just, it really, really, really troubles me. Um, okay. Is she a teacher? Look, you're getting lots of questions. Jane. Working as a social worker in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. When you're doing social work, what are the problems? That's another thing. Try not to get killed by motorcycles. When it comes to Uganda, it can happen. I mean, I know I'm just being a pussy. <laughs> but what are some of the problems that people have when they need social work? Yeah, uh, before in South Sudan, I was working in work for change. Mm -hmm. For change is implementing SDG program, sexual gender mm -hmm. program. So we are trying to uh, tell people about the, the social norms that bring in sexual violence. Mm -hmm. We are trying to look into those social norms in the community that uh, break in uh, violence to women and girls. Mm -hmm. and how possible uh, these social norms that the community have, the negative ones, can mm -hmm. be addressed positively so that people can eliminate you know, sexual um, harassment, sexual um, like issues of rape and assault mm -hmm. towards women and girls. So, unfortunately, the world goes in. Uh, it made me to leave the job yeah. and become successful. So, were you seeing some positive changes in that work? Were things getting you know, yeah, better and better? Uh, yeah, the program implemented for one year and it was for three years. And we are trying to see that there are positive changes coming mm. in, and uh, unfortunately, also. People flew, so there's no one to help. And All right. Yeah, so one of the things people should know about South Sudan is before this conflict, it was already one of the poorest countries, if not the poorest country in the world. And uh, you know, this enormous effort was going on, led by South Sudanese people like Jane, to, to bring the country up, to bring girls to school, to fight against gender-based violence, sexual violence. To, you know, to educate, to build the hospitals, to build roads, all those things. And then this conflict came in December 2013 and just interrupted all that. I mean, how can the country really move on when the best and brightest, many of them, are fleeing the country for their lives? People like Jane, social workers, are in such desperate need and, and, and coming here. 
And of course, you're going to have a lot of work to do here. I think people's psychosocial needs are, are really high. Yeah, but you need so much. Yeah. And uh, if, even if you, are, you, if you have the heart, if someone is in trouble, you have to help. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's your own person and you, uh, the person is in need of help, you have to help. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter I wish everybody thought like that. Like I wish everybody thought like you, Jane. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> Not everybody has the same heart as you do. Yeah. Really. We were just walking around today and we would find like a sick child or something and try to find out who we can refer them to to get assistance. And Jane would just like touch the child so gently and a lot of people would be like backing away, you know, and Jane was just there. And yeah, it's good to give people emotional support, encourage them so that they can have hope yeah. to live in this uh, settlement. What do you know, Pete? What do you think? Do you have any questions? Oh, yeah. That's a good thing. My kids are watching with me and they are mesmerized, says Leah Gadala. They asked when we could go and get them, if we could get them water and food. You can, actually. You can You can by going and making a don donation at uh, oxfam.org. Do you want to for the initial state? Yes, I'm doing it anyway. Or you can go to represent.com forward slash gillies and go and buy a t-shirt. We're going to raise as much money as we can to help. The refugees here. Toronto, I'm so impressed with this. Do they grow any things to eat? Says Anne Marie Lee. Yeah, well, let me talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want to walk to that yeah, crop? Back to that crop. Yeah, 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 we can go. You want to go in here, man? We haven't been in here yet. Yeah. Yeah, actually, let's walk to some crops. So people are growing a lot of the things that they grew back home. Bringing seeds from home because they, you know, a lot of these guys have been displaced before. So they kind of know the score. They bring in their seeds so that you'll see sorghum, you'll see corn, maize. Um, it's not the season yet for uh, peanuts, but they'll be growing peanuts soon. Uh, sesame, uh, onions, tomatoes, pumpkins, um, beans, sweet potatoes. Really an enormous variety of food. Their diet. Um, be a bit healthier than just eating the kind of beans and 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 grain that they get um, from the UN assistance and then get to the point where they can start selling it to generate some income which they can sell to their households. Um, people are incredibly, incredibly industrious and working incredibly hard. The rains just came in really recently. Um, and so after all this planting, uh, it's really starting to grow and we're going to see as we get a little closer the fruits of people's labor. Goats. I'll bring you some, some goats. goats now for a brief goat-like interlude. Yeah, there's a lot of livestock here, actually. I don't think I've ever seen so many goats in my life as I have in the last couple of weeks. Goats and chickens. What's incredible, too, is a lot of people travel with their livestock. So, um, the vision I don't think I'll ever forget is, is of just a bus packed to the hilt with refugees and a guy dismounted the bus, went around the side, unlatched one of the cargo holds, and like nine chickens flew out. Rockstar. I'm trying to look for a great example of the, of the crops. And... So here you got some cassava growing over there. Maize growing behind it. There you go. Rashid is going to point out some... Uh... Crops for us. Um, the okra. Oh, that's okra. okra. All right. This is Rashid, everybody. And the Sam partner is supporting. Mm. In the we are giving siblings. This is Rashid, one of our Oxfam colleagues. Yeah, and currently OPM mm -hmm. has allocated land, mm -hmm. arable land, for them to cultivate. That's the office of the Prime Minister of the Ugandan Uganda. government. So what else are people going there? Sorghum over there, maize, maize here, that's corn, potato. sweet potatoes, beans. <laughs> so why is it that people have to go with those mounds? What, what makes that good? Growing it in the mounds, what, why is that important? Uh, that's how they are, they are grown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they have to provide a provision where the sweet potatoes will grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they make it. Susan Morgan asks, how long...
this is an excellent question. Um, well, some have been here. For, some have been here for like last, since last week. Some have been here for years, right? I mean, to today we just. Yeah, from July. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, it's a year now. Yeah, it's, well, it's a year. When, so when did when did Bitty Bitty officially open? It opened officially in August. In August, uh, okay. 2016, okay. Yeah. And the, we are still experiencing multiple coming, draining other family members. So we have some people who are two weeks old, but the oldest are now one year old. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, the answer to that is hopefully not for terribly much longer. You know. They have to go home. I mean, it was crazy. We, we were talking to, do you remember Jane? We were talking to that lady earlier on today. It's a beautiful butterfly. Um, um, so uh, we were talking to a lady earlier on today, and, you know, who, uh, I mean, didn't she, didn't she come across the border with, when her, her child was one week one old? Week old. One week old. How many other children did she have in South? Like a couple of them other kids. Two, yeah, two, three of them. They, they, they fled South Sudan because their neighbors had been locked inside their own home while the soldiers burned the house down. I mean, those, those are the kind of stories that people tell you without even breaking a sweat. So it's, it's, you know. We met a woman as well who has uh, three children. She has to flee. She doesn't know where her husband is. She just had to leave the country. She couldn't, you know, find the time to. Or she didn't have the time, I mean, to, to be able to tell him what her plans were. She, the war, you know, the conflict reached her, and she just had to go. She brought her three kids, and then along the way, as she was coming here, she came across three other kids who were by themselves, but no one to look after them. And so, I'm going to be the one to look after them. And so she did. And now she's got six children she's looking after all by herself. And it's just an incredible, incredible story of the strength that people have and that commitment they have to, to, to helping other people. Completely selfless. I mean, I was trying to imagine having nothing and then you'd like yeah. taking taking three other kids. See wasn't wasn't there, there was something else that was miraculous about that story. What else did she take on? She took the, the three mm-hmm. and then she said D- didn't she didn't they bring all of their chickens sort of with them as well? Didn't yeah. they you know they had like six <laughs> chickens as well. She's got six children with her and like four or five chickens, and she's crossing the you know the border for her life because she knew she's been displaced before. She knew that bringing those chickens with her might be the difference between paying school fees for kids, getting you know medicine for kids, having a little bit of extra income, a bit of a better diet. And I'm sure it was incredibly difficult, you know, but she did it because she knew that that was the thing to do. Some, someone's getting ready to. But what's, what's about to happen here, buddy? Uh, someone has prepared a garden. Mm-hmm. Probably is going to plant some crops in it. Because this is a rainy season now, all families are preparing farmlands. And this is just a backyard garden, as you can see. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Someone has prepared and has planted. If you can look in the... I heard someone was asking about the sleeping conditions. People you know, are building these, these structures. They're called tukols. They're made of mud brick, um, either in a square shape or a round shape, and they have grass thatching on the roof, keeps the rain out, um, sometimes better even than the plastic sheets they get when they first arrive. And uh, they have mats and they sleep on the, on the floor um, in, in these huts. Um, if people are able to get a little bit of money together, they can actually build something like a bed like you see over there. Um, gets them a little bit off the ground, especially in the rainy season, it's important to be off the ground. It's a lot nicer to be off the ground. Um, but when you first arrive and you arrive with very little, maybe a, in some clothes, a couple of chickens if you can, um, you know, it takes a long while to build up that income base so you can do something like be able to buy a bed or other things you need. Hey, I got some cool questions actually. I want to, should we keep walking? Yeah. Um, so I got one that says, uh, Cheryl Simone Hume says, uh, how can people like us go out and volunteer, she asks. Most important thing. Oh, actually, that, Jackie could almost Jackie, will be, Jackie will be happy to answer Jackie, that. Can you ask the question? Jack, oh, actually, Jackie could almost Jackie, will be, Jackie will be happy to answer Jackie, that. Can you ask the question? Jackie, I got a question. So, Jackie, so Cheryl Simone, don't you step out of the camera, <laughs> say, don't you get you get right back there, Sarah. Uh, and plus, we've got an introduction to me. Hi, everybody. Here. So, so um, the question that uh, Cheryl Simone Hume has asked, Jackie, is how can people like us go out and volunteer? Love from the UK. 
I love the volunteer question um, because I think giving time is really, really generous, and I think there's a lot you can do. You just hoard it in. We, oh, there we go. We're live again. All right, Jackie. Yes. Sorry, what were we, what were we talking about? <laughs> well, first, sorry that yes. we lost you for a minute there. Um, so the question was, how can you volunteer? There are a lot of things you can do. The first and most important is create a conversation. As you learn, make sure that the other people in your social circle are also learning with you. And um, really, you know, hone in on the values that you share with a culture, like peace, for example. Conversation goes a really long way. The second thing is um, consider doing some work right in your community, like with your friends. I think a good example is... Uh, Oxfam offers a toolkit for you to be able to host your own hunger banquet. Um, it's basically a kind of neat, small, intimate event with your friends where you can raise awareness about food insecurity and what that looks like around the world. Hold on, we got to make sure we don't get hit by a motorcycle. <laughs> um, but those hunger banquets, they're fun, they create dialogue, you learn a lot about um, really what food insecurity and food inequality looks like around the world. Visit OxfamAmerica.org, you can find the toolkit there, it's really easy. So I've got a Noah question. No, they're asking how you got involved in Oxfam. And um, actually, I can find out just to say, uh, Madison Davison says, how did Noah get involved in Oxfam? Hey, Madison. Uh, I was actually working in here in Uganda in these refugee settlements uh, with a great local organization called Refugee Law Project. Then I moved to South Sudan and worked with International Rescue Committee, another great organization, and uh, then came across Oxfam and really liked their approach, liked that they were not just assisting people on the ground, but also advocating. Um, Oxfam is an organization that is willing to call out the root causes of problems, call out human rights violations. Um, so I applied for a job and uh, was lucky enough to get it. And then eight years later, here I am, dividing my time between Washington, D.C., talking to U.S. government, New York, talking to the United Nations, and then coming to places like this and talking to people caught up in these crises and trying to bring back some of their ideas to, to, to find solutions. So it's a great question. Thank you. Rock and roll. All right, sweet. There's a mito. This lady makes traditional South Sudanese mats. Oh, she does? Yeah. She's weaving this mat. What's as happening she, over here? As she's here? walking. Yeah, she's weaving this mat. <laughs> and we actually <laughs> met her earlier today. We remember her from her year in beautiful year We should introduce the mito, huh? Yeah. Ah! Mito Lagoon. We should introduce you at some point. I'm going to do it after this. That is so good. Oh, is Can we see? So this is the, the gigantic and beautiful lighting. Uh, uh, lighting. Yeah, can, can, you, can you spot the model? All right. No, but you don't want it to be in the glare. You want it to go like that because it's backlighting. That's sexy. Oh, no. Yeah, sexy, I yeah. They can't well, see my eyes. There we go. Well, you get, you get that side. It's better, exactly. It's Amito Lagoon. Hi, guys. What's up? So it's Ugandan. I'm curious to hear her take on everything she's yes. seen today. Oh, my God. So tell, me, tell me your thoughts about um, what you've It's seen. super interesting. You know, I'm Ugandan. I'm from Uganda. And this is my country. And it's super interesting that lots of Ugandans don't know what's happening here. So uh, today was very informative for me, especially, and it was a challenge as well, getting to see like the different things happening in my country, and I don't even know about them. I was a little bit ashamed of myself. Stop it. <laughs> and um, I lunch. In her, in her defense, she lives in New York. Most of the time, she's never, never really lived in, in, in Uganda, so she can't be too masochistic here. Yes, but, yeah. in my defense. But that's not a good enough defense. Yeah, so um, I, I've learned a lot. And obviously, um, it's, it's um, an opportunity for me to say something to the world and create awareness about what's happening here. And I'm so thankful that Daniel accepted me to come on his team. So thank you, Daniel. <laughs> She beautified the whole operation. Um, okay, so um, I don't know. What else? We, we could probably we could probably call it pretty soon. I mean, yeah, Lena Velez, this incredible man. You want to see if there's any questions you want to like? To me, like, you know, okay, maybe not those ones. I want to see if there's any meat those questions. Going the wrong way. Okay. Am I going the wrong way? Yeah. I've got what? <laughs> Millennial cycle. Oh, no, 
No, right, yeah. Okay, hey, greet them. Do you want to show you hi? No, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. Hey, what did I trust? I was right. Okay. All right. All right. Um, that's it. Um, okay, should we wrap it up? Yeah. We should probably wrap it up. We've been on for a while. Um, she said, Ella El Emodela. Um, says Nadia and Felix. Yes, yeah, she is. Supermodel. I'm going to correct you. This, Helena Petrovic says, will you do another campaign like this? 100%. Um, wait. Italy wants to send you a kiss. They just did. You don't have to want it. You can just, you can just do it. So beautiful, says Maria Augusto. Um, shipping worldwide. Oh, yeah, I've got to mention. This is one thing I've got to mention. Because people kept asking yesterday. Um, for, for, oh, I'm not allowed to talk about it today, am I? I won't do it. I'll do it. Okay, so you got. Okay, so so imagine I'm not me, but but I'm I'm, I'm now gonna do a plug. So just imagine this is yesterday. I was supposed to say that the t-shirts that I'm selling ship worldwide, anywhere in the world. Anyway, so that's not me today on a day where I'd be violating something. That's me yesterday saying you can't. Um, I should probably wrap it up. What do you think? We've been on a while, huh? It's been amazing being here with you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the hearts you're sending. Thanks for paying attention and, and being with us and uh, sharing this experience with us. You can learn more on Oxfam's website. Gracias, gracias. Uh, I love you. I'm sorry. Give it to us in New Zealand. Bagalanyo, amaro, mater, amiro. Amiro means I love you, so amiro. Bye, Jay. Bye. Talk about it. Talk about it. Don't stop talking about it. I love you. Goodbye.